We are taking our such dialogue to be mutual change, which is the only way to development from conflict to peace. And I, of course I have a very critical reservation to the term multiculturalism. Because when we speak about multiculturalism, we mean the coexistence and not the interaction. So we have groups, cultural, religious, ethnic groups, who coexist side by side, but who are closed entities. And that's why it, multiculturalism is the opposite, is a contradiction in terms, as you say in philosophy, uh, to the term uh, uh, integration. You cannot speak about multiculturalism and at the same time speak about integration. It's impossible. You are doing an impossible job. Logically impossible. So you have to move from multiculturalism to interculturality, which is what you should be talking about, intercultural. So the cultures have to have uh, to go inside each other. And to do so, you have to have a very flexible, relativistic mindset, not an absolutist mindset. And you have to be cons uh, convinced that your culture does not possess all the right, correct answers to the question. As we, most of us know, that the Arab, Arabic uh, culture uh, thinks that it possesses the answers, the absolute correct answers to all the questions. And if Jan gives me two more minutes, I will tell you a story about Ta Hussein, who is a famous uh, thinker and uh, man of letter uh, in Egypt in the 20s and 30s. He was a good friend of André Gilles. And uh, he wanted to invite him to come to Cairo. So André Gilles said, why are you inviting me? I don't see the reason, because uh, uh, my way of thinking is to ask questions. But your culture and your people have the right answers to every question. So there is no need for me to come. <coughs> so uh, if, if this mindset is the case, then, then any dialogue or intercultural uh, dialogue will be a mere illusion. Now, the, the major question is, how does ignorance philosophy help to achieve this goal that is moving from multiculturalism to interculturality? Ignorance is, as you know, uh, is a philosopher who, who lived in the glorious days of Al-Andalus, uh, uh, present Spain, of course. Uh, he lived in Cordoba in the 12th century. And uh, he was uh, summoned by Ibn uh, Yaqub uh, al-Mansur, who was the, the governor at the time, al wali and uh, who ordered him to uh, translate, uh, not to translate, to, to, to summarize, because the works were already translated of Aristotle, by the Christians and the Jews, not by the Muslims. Uh, he asked him to, to, trans, uh, to, to, to comment and to clarify the ideas of Aristotle. So, through uh, his uh, summaries, which are very famous, his comments and summaries, uh, he it, uh, came out with his own creative ideas, which uh, he uh, expressed in his famous theory of interpretation. So, he is considered as uh, uh, a very good example of uh, the unity of civilization because I believe that we live in one human civilization which has a certain path from <coughs> mythical thinking to rationality, to rational thinking, from mythos to logos and there are a variety of cultures to speak about civilization in the plural is for me wrong, because it presupposes that there is one culture superior to other cultures, therefore it, it is elevated to the level of human civilization. I believe that we have one common human civilization and variety of cultures. And in, in this sense we organized and held a conference in Alexandria in 2002 titled 
one civilization, many cultures. So how is Ibn Rushd a representative? Very quickly, uh, he advocated the rational scrutiny of the religious text in order to discover the hidden meaning. He had differentiated between the surface meaning and the hidden meaning. Uh, he thus formulated his theory of interpretation as, quote, interpretation is the extension of the metaphorical meaning to the real meaning. That means that any religious text should be understood as obtain, uh, containing uh, uh, metaphorical ideas, like for example, God created the world in seven days. It is not seven uh, uh, 24-hour days. Uh, it is only as a metaphor of the, uh, the, the ability and the, the, um, uh, the greatness and, and, and uh, the potentiality of creating the whole world in a small amount of time. Uh, like uh, uh, Eve was created from the rib of Adam. This is not a literal thing that a woman came out of the rib. It is again a symbol. Uh, so, to understand the, liter the, the, the Quranic text or the scriptures uh, in terms of metaphorical interpretation was began with uh, Ibn Rushd in the 12th century. And for his theory of interpretation, uh, of course, was um, uh, uh, he also uh, called for the, the autonomy of human reason. That a good Muslim, a real Muslim, should think about uh, uh, the existing <coughs> objects around him and that the Quran imposes us or, or preordains us to think, to use our mind. And to use our mind, we have to follow the laws of demonstration. And, and the laws of demonstration require proof, which he, of course, borrowed from Aristotle. Uh, and to demonstrate that the Sharia, which is religion, uh, accords with hikmah, or philosophy. So he tried to understand the Quran in a philosophical way. And this is what uh, was very dangerous to the theologians. So they conspired against him with in Mansur, and uh, they um, destroyed the, the very good relationship he had with Al Mansur, and they convinced him that he is ap apostatic, that he is practicing apostasy, al kufr, uh, and that he was he was Qadid Khuda, he was a judge of judges, and being in such a position is very dangerous to the society. Therefore. Uh, Al Mansur an, made an announcement accusing Ibn Rushd of kufr, and his books were burned, uh, and he was confined to his house in his uh, hometown. Uh, but of course, after his punishment, uh, uh, the, the, this ban or this punishment was lifted a year later. Uh, he had lost all his mm, enthusiasm, and he died one year later. During that time, his ideas were smuggled into Europe.